The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that Russia is ready to send troops to the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan to quell tensions between the two neighbours. Well, tensions have escalated once again in recent weeks as a result of a blockade on the only road that links Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. Well, Azerbaijan claims the blockade was set up by environmentalists, but Armenia says they are government agitators. And all the while, the enclave's population of 120,000 remains cut off. Well, Russia is an ally of Armenia and is striving for good relations at the same time with Azerbaijan. And this current impasse is seen as a key test of Russia's ability to calm the hostilities in its own backyard. Well, for more, we can speak now to Ruben Vardanyan, who is head of uh, Karabakh Armenians, uh, who joins us now from Artsakh, which is also known as uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, can I just start by asking you to tell us what is the situation where you are right now? Good evening. It's uh, 38 days. We're in the blockade. Uh, they cut the gas. We have a limited hours of electricity. Um, we have a limited food, medicaments and uh, fuel. And the entire economy is stopped. This is why we have... Um, we're becoming closer and closer to a humanitarian catastrophe. And um, yesterday, one more event happened. We been uh, unfortunate by separated families. The kids were stuck in Armenia, and a Russian peacekeeper tried to bring them back to join, rejoin the families. They've been stopped by Azerbaijan uh, named Ekhorkivist and been attacked by psychological pressure to them, which showing again what they tried to do everything possible to depressed and psychologically uh, attack all Armenians who live in uh, our country. Why, why can't the peacekeepers from Russia do something to end this blockade? You know very well, France sends a lot of times uh, French peacekeepers in uh, different countries in Africa. It's, um, when you have a limited number of soldiers with a limited mandate to shoot or to stop aggression, is not easy to stop when there's uh, the same civilians who are attacking you because it's not uh, um, easy what you can um, use your weapon against the civilian, doesn't matter which side we represent. But we did hear um, Sergei Lavrov today uh, reported as having said that Moscow is willing to send troops to the area, but he said that the administration in Yerevan has prevented that from happening. What's your response to that? It's not about the situation in Artsakh. He's, I think he, told, he spoke about the situation in the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan, which is a separate problem which Armenia faces now because of uh, aggression of Azerbaijan, who occupied some of the territory in Armenia. Okay, so that's, that's out of context in that case. Um, what can the European Union do then? Can it do something to usefully broker a, a settlement of some description? Europeans can put uh, big pressure to Aliyev regime to explain explaining him what will happen with the sanctions against the him or explaining what the, it's unacceptable to put 120,000 people in the winter time with no electricity, no gas, with the 30,000 kids. I think there will be no question if the Europeans can um, create the pressure saying it will be out of discussion. We will not be invited in Davos and you will not be part of the civilizing call-up. Also, to create airlift corridor, airlift to allow the humanitarian airplanes to land to Stepanakert Airport to bring food and medicines that we needed desperately. Plus, I think the best way to end this story is recognize Artsakh like independent stand because Azerbaijan state cannot provide normal life conditions to the their own people, not only for the Armenians. That's why, I mean, in the current situation, what we are facing is one more evidence confirming that this is not possible to live in a state of Azerbaijan where you are getting so much pressure and so much um, <clears throat> attack against the civilians. Yeah, as you've been talking, we've been looking at pictures of what look like empty supermarkets, uh, presumably in your uh, region. I mean, how are people managing to survive in the winter, as you said, very cold temperatures, limited fuel, if any fuel at all, and it seems not much to eat either. No, yeah, but first of all, you need to know the Artsakh people, Armenians who live in Artsakh, 
It's very strong people. We are a strong nation. And despite all these difficulties, the mood of people is very strong. They said, because we are fighting for our own independence, we are ready to stay and show our commitment and our courage against any pressure. Secondly, the reserves which we plan to, uh, we um, collected during the last couple of years after the war, and we're distributing these um, products uh, by special coupons, which people received and they're getting some part of the food. Plus, we got Red Cross and Russian peacekeepers. We're bringing a limited number of the food or medicaments to the population, but it's very limited because, again, it's uh, 120,000 people, and it's only one track from Red Cross and a couple of tracks from Russian peacekeepers. So I, we have a problem with everything, with the vegetables, with the fruits, with the fish, no fish, and many other things. But we have a grain, we have a little bit of meat from our reserves, and uh, people uh, understanding, uh, we understood the situation, we accept that this is the tough time, and this is the continuity of the war, which was not over after uh, November 9, 2020. And just people said, we will fight and we will survive despite all the pressure. So ultimately, given all the different actors involved, and of course we haven't mentioned Turkey, but Turkey is obviously a key player in, in, in that situation as well. Who ultimately holds the key to bringing about some sort of a settlement and bringing an end to the suffering of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh? It's a tough question. I think the main benefiter, benefactor for this all is uh, uh, Ali regime, because having external enemy, it's uh, allowing him to keep his regime. Don't forget, from 104 years that Azerbaijan exists from part of Soviet Union or like independent country, 44 years is one family ruling this country. It's for them to keep unity inside. It's the uh, <clears throat> only way if you can have somebody outside enemy that they can always use to attack and consolidate the nation. That's why I think the key in Azerbaijan people's hands, because they kids is dying during the war. They are poor. And if you compare, for example, the revenue per person in Azerbaijan, where there's so much oil and gas, they are less of a number compared to Armenia. This is showing with the benefit of this all is Azerbaijan regime who are running this all. And the key holders, the, the key holder is the uh, international civilized world who needs to explain this is unacceptable. And Turkey, Russia, Iran, uh, US, France is a big player by the end. It's our own goal and our own uh, responsibility to show commitment and courage to, to defend our own independence. And Azerbaijan, one day or other, needs to understand the only way we can live close to each other is being neighbors, not being part of the Azerbaijan. That's why the key holder of his all is the uh, Azerbaijan uh, ruler of the country, is the fam Aliyev family. So you don't think the fact that uh, you know, Russia is obviously in a state of indirect conflict with, with Europe and uh, obviously the, the war in Ukraine being uh, a key factor for, 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 for us in Europe to have to think about and as well as uh, for, the, for the Russians. But you don't think that's playing a part in somehow making us not all sing from the same song sheet and have the same united response. Would you say that was a separate issue? No, Russia has, Russia has of course big influence and we are believing Russia playing an important role for this region and will play an important role. But the same like Europe. Look, Azerbaijan signed a big uh, gas contract recently, and they're supplying gas, which money will use against their own people, against their own uh, Azerbaijan people, and they're using this also to buy weapons and use against us. This is why I think the players who, uh, again, continuing the uh, commercial activity with Azerbaijan is Europe, for example. We're accepting uh, autocratic regime who are trying to destroy a democratic country like Arsak. And this is why it's a good example of uh, double standard in many places, in many big players. And Russia and Europe and the um, United States, of course, can play important role. Especially France, I will say honestly, is one of the exceptional countries who've been from first day of blockade, stay strong and c committed to support Armenians in Artsakh, which I want to say again, thank you for us doing this. And I believe Russia, France, and U.S. needs to come back to the table with Minsk Group and try to uh, create pressure. Uh, from free angles to the Azerbaijan. And Turkey needs to understand we will nobody allow them to be in this region, big player, even how they want it. Iran, including Iran, will not allow them to be um, a significant stakeholder in Azerbaijan. Okay, well, thank you. We're going to have to leave it there. We're out of time, but thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, uh, Ruben Vardanian. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks.